she she kills him. <laughs> and so yeah, they're really, uh, really uh, beautiful little things. I don't speak Spanish, and so I'm literally just a caretaker of beautiful things, waiting for someone to write a PhD on Mexican comics from the the mid '70s. I think it would be uh, you'd be the person who wrote the book because the book doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They make me really, really happy. Where they basically take the original, um, uh, kind of an original, you know, panels from like young romance, and then they just uh, replace the word balloons to kind of like make it as absurd as possible, you know, as, as ridiculously like uh, 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 gender normative and like problematic as it possibly can be, like as a person. Um, yeah, and then if you get Bart Beanie's book on comics versus art, he talks a little bit about romance comics and Roy I can never so it talks a little bit about the use of that and how it actually really upset comic book artists because it's like why is this the real art and the comic book isn't the real art and um, so I think that can be problematic in terms of just developing the historical narrative for the comic book but I also think it's great to see you like the readers that you're talking about and they're really funny throwbacks to these every once in a while on Facebook when I come across them and I think it's quite fun and it's good because it's getting people thinking like if this was in comic culture like what does that say about how it was really happening in the 50s yeah if we have like you know Joe, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby inventing this genre like why are we not paying more attention to it like critically right okay. like why aren't there more books about this and, it, and, it, I'm sorry. Just saying, and then you find out that they're connected to an even a, a super strong genre of confession magazines as well so it's, it's extra weird yeah 